Hey guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to Spare Room. Welcome back to the mysterious video 15 that was missing in the Patreon project. And here's why. We've had an update and we had trouble machining this bore for a couple of reasons. Uh, initially I thought there was a hard spot in the back of the cylinder here. Uh, and we got to within about 10 mil at the end and it was just getting round. Like the, the ridge in the back was just round. Uh, and about three or four mil taper from this end to this end. We thought, well, we're going to need some decent gear because all we had was a, a three quarter carbide boring bar and a, and a boring head with about this much stick out to get through it. And you all saw that video. And really wasn't cutting. So this time we made a boring bar and I'll explain that. So here we are in John Pettit's workshop. With the big man for meal. And we've set this up on an angle plate here. Just bolted him on nice and flush here. And we've centered the old hole that we started with last week. It's cutting a lot better, but there's still a ridge right in the back. It seems to file okay, so I don't believe it's really hard. Uh, what I think we need to do is, John's just out there sharpening the, the tool. We're going to take a light cut through and then another light cut. And when it cleans itself up, we're going to put the finishing cut through it and that should be nearly good enough. Seems like everything's going to clean up and I'm fairly pleased about it. It's a bit thin here in the back but I think we can work with that. We've made a boring bar here, which is a bit of inch 4140 with a grub screw in the side and a hole for a split point carbide tool bit. Um, this is nice and rigid and it's just an ER collet, so it seems to have no reflection. So we're going to run through this gently just on the end and then we're going to clean him right out to the size and I think we're going to be pretty jolly close to where we want to be. So it doesn't want much more out of it. Um, really just to clean up here at the top would be nice. On the piston we've got 34 millimetres we can go to. On the back of the skirt I'm not sure we're going to go quite that far. We probably can without any problems. But if we can get away with 33 it would be better because um, it was a bit more on the, a bit less weight in the piston and a bit more meat in the, in the back of the bore here which uh, probably doesn't matter very much but that's what we're going to do. Let's get in and cut this. So here we are back on the bench. We've got a nice bore, it's parallel all the way through. It's a fraction bigger than I would have liked. But it's not so big that our rough piece, piston still doesn't need machining down to fit it. So it's still on size. And being a little bit bigger here probably doesn't hurt uh, because it means that the conrod's not going to touch here and here. That's kind of important. And something I was worried about. I didn't really want to shorten this up too much. There's a hole here where the basically the cores overlapped. Um, the actual end of the, the cylinder was supposed to be back here. But because the core was a little bit deeper, it ended up back out here, and that's cool. But I'm going to do a bit of a job here and clean this off because it sticks out a bit on this side and cut this piece out of here with the Dremel. That's first thing, just to tidy that up. We need to drill a hole in here for an oiler. And this is fairly thin here. It's, it's not crazy thin, but it's down to about two millimeters, something like that. I don't think it's gonna worry anything. There's a fair bit of weight in this side all the way through. I'm not sure how much diameter we've got in the actual 
cylinder all the way through and how much thickness. Um, I don't imagine it's probably much thicker than this, but it goes all the way through and there's no holes. It's a beautiful bore. If we have a bit more of a look. Uh, don't know if we can even see that, can we? That's a pretty good bore through there, and I'm really happy with that. Still needs a hone through it before we fit the piston, and that's sort of a, a job that needs to be done, but I'm going to go and buy one, or order one on eBay or such. Probably going to sit down now and order one. And thanks to you Patreon guys for the, the opportunity to do that. This is threaded, and... If we have a look at the book, which has actually been wet in the recent floods, but I'm not going to print another one, it's still readable, it's getting a bit mouldy. Um, we were sitting on the coffee table and we had a water drip during the night. I have an oil cup that sits here with a, what looks like probably a wick oiler. Doesn't give us any details about that or what thread or anything, so we've just got to find a thread, and I'm probably going to thread it, model engineer thread, drill it right through and then counter bore it and thread it. Uh, chunky won't hurt, 932 by 32 and 932 by 40, something like that. Model engineer pipe thread and we can make an order for that at some point. Now, we probably should do some calculations. And we've got this piston that JB from Oz printed, which is really nice of him. Um, it's certainly a lot lighter than this one's going to be. Um, I've, I've made a good start on this, and there's a video to come about this. We've actually got a hole through it, and we've got the inside machine. We've just got a machine the outside and the ring grooves. But if we have a look, This sort of fits. We don't, it's flexible enough to have to. It's flexible enough that we don't even have to sort of take any of that off. And that way up it actually spins, which is great. What we're going to have to do, I think, with the brass one, because I've taken a little bit off the end here, is probably. I'm going to set this up in the mill and machine a, a groove in the bottom here just to give us we'd say a two and a half inch cut or something like that just to give us enough clearance so that this doesn't touch and probably also when the drip's a bit of oil that splashes it that, that's probably what's going to happen there Looking at this though, and I don't know how much lower we can go here. Let's look at it. It's the cylinder at the top point, and we've got a fair bit of gap there. So we've got a fairly low compression anyway. I'm expecting this might be 5 to 1 if that, as far as compression ratio. Now if we sit down and look at the cylinder head drawing, I'm just going to mark on it now. This on the full size one comes in at eighth, which is 330 seconds, something like that, which is two and a half millimetres inside here. And valve travel, Valve travel only seems to be, looking at the drawings, about another four millimetres. So we're looking at probably seven mil, something like that, inside here. And as such, that's probably pretty good. Looking at this mention here, we've got, just to do it in metric quick so it's easy, 12 millimetres there and 70 millimetres there. So 70 
That's about six to one. It's not quite six to one. And I think we're going to live with that. So our conrod length is right. Um, pretty happy with that. And we can't change that much anyway because we're going to affect our clearance if we go much shorter or much longer. Probably if we go yeah, a bit longer, it's going to touch here and here. Um, and at the moment it clears. It's got a couple of mil there and there's a couple of mil there. So I'm going to say that the dimensions we've got here, which are scaled down perfectly from the drawing, they're probably not far out, except this dimension here could be better. And these holes are in the centre of this space. They could come a little bit towards the middle. And if we could get this from... It doesn't come out that way. As John Mills discovered when he restored his. But you can see what I've done here. I've. That's what I needed to do to make it clear. So looking at this overall, I think it worked out to be just over an inch. If we could, bring these even right into the edge here, or they won't hurt to be a little bit further in, even so. It's probably all right, but for simplicity and ease and everything else, we might just get a big cutter and put a groove or a scallop in here, from here across to here, um, and make it look like a design feature. So that, that's where we're at with that. So next job is to clean this up. Drill and tap this. And make a jig and finish the piston and make it fit in there. But we need to hone this first, so I'll auto hone. And I'll turn the video off and get in here with the Dremel and the grinding wheel. And we'll have a look when we're done. So I just I just recorded all that without the camera going. But anyway, I've got a thread in here and I've set I've drilled that number one and I've put I've tapped it quarter forty. Now these these taps when they come are generally pretty useless. Model makers taps, like model pipe thread taps. Nearly all the ones I've ever seen have got this crazy point on them, the ground like that. Pain in that because most things that you would tap with these, because they're tight pipe fittings, they're for, for gland nuts and and fittings, that sort of thing, mostly in blind holes, you only get you don't even touch the thread before this touches the end of the hole. Right, this will go in here and turn. Um, I generally take the intermediate down on the bench grinder a bit like that, because that had the same point on it, and I take the plug down a fair bit more, because that gives you at least a few threads. I've drilled and tapped that. Um, I've spent a bit of time on this and cleaned it up so that it actually hasn't got the jagged edge around there, and it's down back below the, the pattern line. I'm pretty happy with that. It's got a bit of a slope on it. This has got a bit of a slope on it too. Um, it's, a, it's sort of a compromise. And I wasn't going to point this out to anyone because no one's ever going to notice. But this bore here, this flat on the front, is parallel to the bore. And the bore is parallel to the crankshaft, but the crankshaft isn't parallel to the casting. It's out of fraction. It's not much. And you really can't notice it. But it's this way a little bit. So when we put the crankshaft in, what you find is we slip that in there. Um, you can't tell. You really can't, because everything's organic shape, 
and even the fry world on this castings this castings across this way a little bit too so it kind of lines up and when we bored this we bored it at 90 degrees for this crank so the first thing we did was set this up at 90 degrees and face this or, or at 180 degrees to the mill and face this off which is probably a millimetre deeper on this side than this side um, might not even be that much then we bored this um, parallel or, or perpendicular to this surface and as such it's at 90 degrees to the crank and it's in the centre here and everything should be really good and it looks like it probably is from, from what I can see at this point however what you're going to find or what we're going to find is that when we machine the head and put it on there is that it sticks there around that way a little bit not enough to worry about but everything else does too so I'm not going to probably lose any sleep on it I'm going to clean this edge up with the same radius as this all the way around with a file and we're going to call it an optical illusion because you can't really tell but everything lines up nice and I'm really pleased about that I might continue putting this back together so we can see what the engine looks like and we'll have a bit of a look at that before um, before we end this video so here we go this is where we're at we've got a lot of 3d print parts in this still because we're prototyping as we go and it seems every project I do I'm starting from scratch and making something that no one else has and trying to get a bit all the bits to line up we've got oiler in there or oiler hole to go in there is oiler to make it probably is going to stand that high and it's going to have a little lid on it It'd be nice um, at this point we're probably going to scallop, scallop a bit of this out at probably a millimeter two millimeters deep in a radius here underneath so that this clears we've got our water pipes on look at the working side this one here is the I guess it's the inlet and this one's the outlet and there's going to be thermosiphon whether we put a radiator in here or put a groove in here in case I want to run a fan something like that I'm not sure yet what's happening maybe a radiator would be really nice on here um, we've got plastic camshaft in have a look there uh, with what I think is about the right lift on the cam we don't want it too racy because then it's going to run a too quick you don't really want that because there's no governor on this engine as such we've got the push rod in and the bracket here um, for the the cam on the end for the the spark and we've got a push rod bracket on this end as well and we've got a four mil silver steel push rack rod and this bit of stock's actually got a bend in it so i'm going to have to order another one that hasn't i think um, is struggling to, to straighten that successfully but that slides in and out reasonably well I don't like that very much as it is but we're going to order another piece of stock from here where do we go well we can make the piston and fit and finish that that's going to need a faceplate made up and a draw bolt and Gonna need to be machined down to fit in that hole. We still need about a mm, three quarters of a millimeter, something like that, off it. I think. Actually, that fits in there, so that's about how much that that ridge on the end is probably yeah three quarters of a millimeter. We can set this up, and we can face the back, and we can machine a boss on it to go in the hole, and we can put the three studs in there and drill the spark plug hole and some ports and things and have the cylinder head on and looking pretty good we can make an order i think i've already said that 
we can make a bush for the corn rod when the corn rod gets here. Really pleased that none of this touches anywhere really. Not nothing that's not we can't overcome. I don't think we're gonna put this groove in here until we get the piston and everything in and make sure we see where everything's fitting. Um we can make a camshaft or at least the shaft that the cam goes on to go through there. Um, you can see if we have a bit of a look, I think you can see there. I think you can see the, the plastic one in there. That's where that goes. And I've got a piece of stock, which is 4140, cut to length to actually make that. So that's that's a, a job that'll happen pretty quickly. This could all do with a bit of a sand up and a little bit of feeler and a bit of a clean up. Um, it's been sitting around in someone else's workshop for a bit and it's pretty manky. I only put the white paint on for, for contrast for the film, but um, it won't hurt to keep it looking nice. It's a lot easier to work on like that than grey cast iron that's gone rusty. So there we go. Thanks for watching and thanks for your patience with this last little bit. I've, it's, I know it's been a while since we had an update, but I really have been a bit scared of doing this. And now we've got it right and got everything sweet. And it really is very, very sweet, I think. Um, we can go ahead and, and finish the rest. Just a, a few little, little tidy up jobs to do in between. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, this went to air, I think, 3rd of February. 2020 and if you're watching on patreon a huge thanks guys like a really big thanks for making projects like this possible and really really appreciate it but it's starting to come together and look pretty good be kind to each other